Now let's check our chart and our beats here. Get these bricks off of here. Then we can pull off the fabric. See what happened. Got one more brick to get off there. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a great day. It is Wednesday, December 28th here in South Georgia, and the Arctic Blast is officially over. We've warmed up to about, you know, low 60s today and going to warm up even more in the next few days. So to give you an idea of what we experienced here, Saturday morning, it was about 16 degrees, which is really, really cold. For South Georgia that day it never got warmer than about 32 or 33 it was 20 degrees the next morning we warmed up to about 40 the next morning 20 degrees again warmed up to about 45 maybe a little higher than that then we had 20 5 26 degrees warmed up in the 50s and then this morning it was about 27 and here we are in the 60s so having those nighttime temperatures in the teens or even the low 20s is pretty unusual here for us in South Georgia. I think the coldest I can remember it being since we've lived here was 17 degrees, but it warmed up a good bit later that day. The problem was that it never really warmed up, especially that one day when it was 16 in the morning and didn't get any warmer than 32 or 33. So we never got out of freezing temps for that entire day. Now I really hadn't spent a whole lot of time in the garden during the Arctic blast just because it was kind of depressing. I did walk around and check on a few of the things that weren't covered, but I haven't checked on any of the things that we covered yet. I figured I'd save that for this video. We could do it together and go around and assess the damage. But before we check on the garden, let me show you what I did just to keep the pipes from freezing so we would have water in the house. Now, keep in mind, down here we don't get that cold very often. This is a once every 20 years kind of deal. So our plumbing is not really equipped to handle the kind of temperatures that we just experienced. So one thing we had to do was wrap our well here. I don't have a pump house around mine like some people do. So we just have to wrap it. And you can see my beautiful wrapping job here. We just took some old blankets that were in the house, taped them around there. And then I took a tarp, one of the tarps I usually use in the garden, wrapped that around there. And that seemed to work pretty well. I also took this water hose, as you see right there, running out into those pine trees kind of down there to that pond and left it running wide open for about two days now i also was watering the garden a little bit throughout the arctic blast there but i wasn't so sure that there was enough flow going through the drip tape into the garden to keep everything from freezing so that's why i turned that water hose on wide open and that kept everything moving so nothing froze and for our greenhouse here with our thousand plus baby fig trees inside we were able to keep this thing from getting too too cold you can see i've got the door open today this was getting by 85 90 degrees pretty toasty in there but during those real cold nights we just had two electric heaters had a propane heater running in here and i was able to keep it about you know 45 to 55 degrees which i'm happy with i just didn't want it dropping below 40. So we didn't have any pipes freeze. We were able to keep the greenhouse warm enough. Those are the two good things. Now the garden here is gonna be a different story. So we'll start off in this in-ground brassica plot, assessing the damage vegetable by vegetable. So starting off over here, we've got two rows of broccoli that look just absolutely decimated. They just froze and kind of broke off there. Good thing we harvested all this before the Arctic blast came because there is nothing left to be had from these two rows of broccoli. Now our cauliflower here doesn't look quite as bad as the broccoli, but it looks pretty dang rough. I'm not sure it's going to recover. There weren't any heads on this that we could have harvested, so nothing we could really save. We could have covered it, but didn't quite have enough covering to cover these so we'll just wait and see what happens see if these recover see if we get some tiny heads off of them my guess is that they're toast now we had several things survive pretty well but the one thing that took it like a champ took it better than any other vegetable we had in our garden were these brussels sprouts here you can see maybe a little bit of leaf curling on those 
but man they look great they love the cold weather and hopefully that means we get some nice sprout production pretty soon then our cabbage here took a pretty good beat down not quite as bad as the broccoli but a pretty good beat down now i did come in here and harvest about five heads of this bravo cabbage that were kind of close to being ready they weren't that big but figured i'd at least save those few so that's why you see some of those cut there the rest of the heads that we left out here i'm not so sure about them they may make it some of these megaton heads over here getting pretty close they may make it we'll just see as things warm up and we get a little rain the next few days we'll see if they recover or not this capture cabbage down here wasn't really close you can see it's just starting to form some heads and this variety tends to be pretty cold hardy so if any of them are going to make it i would guess these capture heads might and then the last thing in this plot is this row of chocolate habanero peppers that we've been trying to grow over the winter. Might have picked a bad winter to try and do that. We've got two layers of frost protection on here. We've got some AG19 and then we put some AG30 on top. So let's pull this back and see what happened. Now if any of these made it, I'm going to be really, really surprised. Let's see here. Oh, yep. Look at there absolutely toast see if it's not just that one yeah yeah they are done so done so done so done so oh well we tried so we definitely lost some things in that plot but not everything still got two beautiful rows of brussels sprouts there i give some of that cabbage about a 60 65 percent chance of recovering the cauliflower probably more like a 20 percent chance on it now let's check on our allium plot behind me here so let's start off with our garlic here that we have mulched with pine straw our elephant garlic looks really really good can't even hardly tell that it took any damage maybe a few little tiny yellow tips there maybe a little bit of burn on those but for the most part those look great now our soft neck garlic here did seem to take more of a hit a lot more yellowing and browning going on here now i would have thought the soft neck garlic would have done better or fared better i would have thought it was more cold hardy than the elephant garlic and it could just be the fact that the elephant garlic was up and more established whereas the soft neck garlic was just popping through the straw and then we have our onions here which took a pretty big hit but i don't think they're dead yet they look pretty rough now but i think they're slowly going to recover they might not look as good as they once did but i think they'll come back at least for these three double rows right here now these other two rows that we planted later than those three rows these plants were smaller and they look pretty rough. I think some of these might be toast. So we might not have a real full row here. I don't think I'm gonna replant it. We'll just see what we end up getting. I don't think it killed all of those, but it did kill some of them. And that shows the importance of planting timely, getting these things established, getting them up and going before things can get real cold. So no complete losses in the allium plot. We may lose a few plants, but I don't think we're going to lose a whole row of anything there. Before we go to the raised beds and assess those, let's talk a little bit about the cover crops and our chickens. So our six girls made it through the Arctic blast just fine. I did put a little solar blanket over the top of this exposed end of the chicken tractor, something we take on our camping trips using our pop-up camper. That worked pretty good to keep it a little more warm in there. I did pull out the chicken water every day. So when I move them late in the afternoon, I'd pull the water out of there, put it way back there in the greenhouse so it wouldn't freeze and then put it back in the morning. That seemed to work pretty well. Now, as far as the cover crop itself, it did kill some of the components of this overwintering mix, but we've still got some nice lush green growth there. Some of that rye and barley, plenty of good stuff for those chickens to graze. Just not as much diversity there as we once had. And we can see the effects of those real cold temps even more on this cover crop here that hasn't had a chance to really establish yet. We can see some death down there with some of those components. Some of that tillage radish wasn't ever going to make it through 16 degrees. But we've got enough stuff that survived here. We should eventually get a nice dense patch. 
Now this big plot of cover crop took quite the beating. So this is a little different mix than what I showed you earlier. This is called the cool season soil builder mix. Kind of the same components of the other mix with a few other different things in it. And this area right here, closer to those pine trees, tends to stay more shaded during the day. And where it doesn't get very sunny, man it never recovered and it almost just looks flattened out there this stuff was nice lush three foot tall and it just took a beat down there it probably will recover but it looks pretty rough now we get over here to the more sunny part of the plot still took a decent little beating but it's not laid flat like it is over there in that shaded area not a complete loss here by any means, but interesting to note the contrast in damage from the shaded area to the sunny area that was able to warm up a little bit. All right, and finally, let's go through our raised bed plot here. Well, we took more damage than I was expecting on the things we didn't cover. So let's first take a look at the beds that we didn't cover, and then we'll unveil those other beds and assess the damage on those. So we'll start out with our spinach here, which I expected to do just fine. We got a little bit of leaf burn there, but not a whole lot. So it's just going to reduce or slightly reduce the amount of harvestable leaves we have there. But these things should keep growing just fine. And before too long, we'll have some nice spinach to eat. Then we've got these three long beds of root veggies and our parsnips right here. Whew, they look rough. They look rough. They might recover. They might not recover. I'm not feeling very optimistic about these at this point. We'll just see what happens with those. Our carrots took a lot more punishment than I thought they were going to take. You can see they're wilted down pretty good. I'm confident that these will recover. They've just been halted, been stunted a little bit but they should come back. We still got a decent amount of green in there, even though those tops are laid over. Same thing with this carrot bed right here. Although we do have a few plants in there that didn't wilt at all and look pretty good. So I think we'll still have some carrots. Then we've got some greens that we didn't cover. Our collards took a pretty hard lick, as you can see there, but I think they're gonna be okay. Those leaves that got burnt, Probably not going to be any good, but the new leaves that it puts on, hopefully in the next few weeks, should be nice and delicious. Same thing with our kale over here. Our lacinato kale took a lot more damage than the curly kale. The curly kale looks just fine. Lacinato kale looks pretty rough. Looks about like the collards do. I think it will recover. We just lost a few leaves there, but this stuff, heck, we could harvest those leaves and eat those tonight. So if you're wanting to grow kale through the winter and you live somewhere that gets a lot colder than us, I would say definitely go with the curly kale. Seems to be a lot more cold hardy than the lacinato type. I know a lot of people like the dinosaur kale or the lacinato kale, but if you're worried about it getting damaged from the cold, stick with the curly stuff. All right, now let's start uncovering some of these beds. Now this bed doesn't have frost protection fabric on it. Obviously it has pine straw. So we've got this bed split in half. Got hardneck garlic planted over here. I was gonna put straw on it anyway. Probably just gonna leave that in place. It should pop up through the straw. Over here we had leeks planted and they hadn't been in the ground long. I was pretty worried about them. And I wanna see if there's anything left here to pull them back to straw and it doesn't look like there is looks like those baby leeks are absolutely toast well actually no there's one right there there might be a few in there that made it so huh okay well that's good news so i'll probably take off a little bit of this straw later today here let those leeks get some sun now we may have lost a few of them but i don't think we lost all of them now let's check our chard and our beets here. Get these bricks off of here. Then we can pull off the fabric. See what happened. Got one more brick to get off of there. Yep. Yep, that AG30 just wasn't enough for 16 degrees. I had a few leaves that are still green there, but most of this stuff looks pretty toast. Maybe some of these beets might make it. Uh, yeah, I got a little bit of viable growth still on those. Not a lot here, 
we'll just see what happens. We may end up just scratching this. We'll see what recovers in the next few days. And now for this bed where we've got celery and parsley planted. See if anything in here made it. And hot dog. Everything in there looks really, really good. I wasn't worried about the parsley a whole lot. I was worried a little bit about the celery, but got a little bit of leaf burn there, but not a whole lot. Success on this bed. Now this bed here was probably the one I had the least amount of confidence in just because most of the stuff in here isn't very cold hardy and we only had AG19 on it. And yeah, everything there is absolutely toast. I might have a little bit of cilantro there that made it, but this deal's pretty much toast. Time to scrap this bed, turn it over, and plant something else here. Now let's check these taller beds. This one here has rutabagas and red cabbage in it. Get these clips off of here first. Get our bricks out of the way. I'll pick up all these bricks later. Let's pull her back and see what we've got. And... That all looks really, really good. Our red cabbage still looks great. We did trim a couple of these leaves that were sticking out beyond the edge of the bed. Looks like that was an effective technique. Got a little bit of leaf burn on the rutabagas there. Not a whole lot. I don't think our rutabagas are squishy or soft. No, those still feel nice and firm. So success on this bed. And we've got our lettuce here, which is highly subject to be toast. We're about to see. Yeah. Might be a little bit there we can salvage. Maybe a head or two of that oak leaf. A little bit of that butterhead lettuce. Romaine looks pretty rough. Cherokee looks pretty rough. So, uh, we won't have to scrap it all. We'll probably feed some of these burnt looking heads. Like that one right there that one you can't eat that but the chickens can eat it so we'll give those to the chickens and we'll see what some of these that still look okay we'll see how they make it in the next few days and then lastly here we've got this bed with savannah mustard and pak choy i was hoping the savannah mustard would make it so we could at least harvest it one more time and most of that pak choy there looks pretty rough Probably going to be chicken food for that. Savannah mustard here, looks like it took a little bit of damage. But the fact that we had cut it back, I don't know, it might make it. I think I'm going to leave the savannah mustard. We'll see what happens on that. Hopefully some of it will recover. Some of these plants might be toast. Some of these stems are still firm though. So we'll just see what happens with these. This stuff right here will go to the chickens. So we knew well before this Arctic blast came that we were going to take an L. We just didn't know how big of an L we were going to take. And after assessing all that, I would say we took a moderate sized L. So we definitely lost some things that I thought had a little bit of a chance of making it. Probably lost our cauliflower, lost some of our cabbage, lost our beets and chard, probably lost our parsnips there, lost a little bit of lettuce, and lost our pak choy. But we didn't lose everything, and although now we might not have quite as much diversity as far as what we can eat from the backyard grocery store, we still got plenty of good groceries here that we can harvest over the next couple months. And for those beds or rows that are toast or just not going to make it, we just have to stay positive with it. Now we can clean those out. We've got a fresh new pallet there. We can plant something else, and we can start thinking about some late winter, some early spring plantings already. And as I told you on that last video, if this is your first year growing food throughout the winter, or maybe you've been gardening in the winter for many years, don't let this year discourage you from continuing to try to grow food for your family and friends in the winter months. This only happens once every 20 years or maybe even in a wider window than that. So next year, I'm sure things will be much better, much easier. 
Now I think there are a couple good lessons we can learn from this experience, especially for me. One would be to go ahead and have all your frost protection supplies before winter starts. When fall rolls around, before winter gets here, go ahead and have all the hoops and all the frost protection fabric that you're gonna need. This stuff doesn't go bad, it lasts for many, many years. Go ahead and invest, have it, so if you do get a rogue frost event, you can protect your plants from it. You don't want to be at the last minute waiting to get something in the mail, wondering if you're going to get it in the mail or scrambling, running out to stores, trying to find something to protect your plants at the last minute. And then the second important lesson would be to have a diversity of things in your winter garden. That way, if some stuff gets killed, you've still got plenty of other stuff to eat. So have some really cold hardy stuff like Brussels sprouts and spinach in your winter garden. Some of the other stuff you take more of a chance on, but you know, even if you get a crazy, crazy cold event like we just had, you're still going to have stuff out there producing, still going to have groceries to eat. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. And as always, you can find links in the description below to any of our affiliate partners. Got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got our garden blog, recipes, hats, shirts, all kind of good stuff over there. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh. Well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.